Mr. Parker, would you give us your full name and your DOC number, please? Patrick Parker, 385992. Thank you. Mr. Parker, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record. Then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. Uh, I'll then ask the warden to uh, give us some comments, uh, and then we'll have a, a hearing. Uh, you currently have, uh, then we'll allow those people who wish to speak to, to have input. Uh, speaking today on your behalf is your mother, Miss Eleanor Phillip, uh, and your cousin, Jerry Phillip. Uh, here today in opposition is Ms. Linda Davis, Ms. Linda Sewell, Ms. Andrea Landry, uh, Shaquille Babin, uh, Aldernique Babin, who will be speaking, uh, Demetpia Harden, who will be speaking, uh, Quindea Bell, who will be speaking, Paula Bell, who will be speaking, Randy Sewell, uh, Quintari Bell, Lynette Landry, Demarius Zachary, Jaquela Zachary, Lindsay Zachary, Jamar Landry, who will be pleading, I'm sorry, Jaquela Landry, Lindsay Landry, Jamar Landry, uh, Cheryl uh, Duncan, Troy Landry, Keith Harris, Sherry Landry, and Michael Landry. Uh, once we have the hearing, uh, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say to the board, and then we'll vote. Do you understand our process, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is the matter of Patrick C. Parker, uh, DOC number 385992, date of birth December the 16th of 1977. He is classified as a second felony offender. He has a parole eligibility date of May the 28th of 2024, an adjusted good time date of January the 9th of 2055, full term date of July 13th of 2066. He is currently serving a 70 year sentence on the charges, on two separate charges of manslaughter. Is that information accurate, Mr. Parker? Yes, sir. Mr. Parker, your case has been assigned to me, so uh, I'll begin our interview process, okay? Mr. Parker, how old are you, sir? 45. Okay. And how long have you been in prison on these specific charges? 19 years and six months. Yeah. Almost. Uh, this offense occurred in 2004. Is that correct? And you've been in prison that long, or did you bond out at some point? Okay. I didn't bond out. I've been in, been in jail. You, 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 you were arrested in 2004, and you've been in jail the entire time? Okay. okay. So you were 26 at the time. Does that sound about right? I would say 24. 24. All right. So tell me what was going on in your life at 24 years old. Were you working? Can you repeat that, sir? Were you working? No, uh, I was working at the China Blossom restaurant, in Jefferson Paris, on uh, Stolfer, right? All right. Were drugs or alcohol involved at all in your life? I sold drugs when I was younger. Uh, my first conviction was for possession of crack, simple possession. Uh, did you use drugs? I smoked marijuana when I was younger. How about during uh, the year of 2004? Were you using any drugs or drinking any alcohol during that time? Yeah, I, I was smoking marijuana. How often were you smoking marijuana? Off and on. What does off and on mean? Like, so, like every other day or probably like twice or three times a week. So every other day? And how long had you been smoking marijuana every other day? Since I was probably about 16. So from the time you were 16 until you committed this crime in 2004, you were smoking marijuana at least every other day. Uh, I would say 
Yeah. Did you use any other drugs? Did you use cocaine, heroin, any other kind of drugs, pills? Marijuana. And I drank liquor. And how often were you drinking alcohol? Probably, probably once a week. Not much. What would you drink? And Jay, Randy. Once in a while, if I go out to a club or something. Have you ever had any sort of substance abuse treatment on the outside? Any sort of inpatient treatment? Any sort of counseling for substance abuse, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, anything like that? No, sir. Were you drinking or smoking marijuana on the day that this happened? I, I smoked some marijuana earlier today. You've been in prison now for 19 years. Uh, you've taken a few programs. Uh, have you reached any conclusion about your substance abuse? What do you consider yourself on the substance abuse spectrum? Uh, you consider yourself uh, uh, an addict? Well, you know, once an addict, always an addict. Well, uh, I, I accept that premise. Do you consider yourself a drug addict? I would say that. Because I'm always, I'm always in mission to where I have to, you know, once an addict, always an addict. I strive not to indulge into certain I, I understand, Mr. Parker, that you're you're reciting to me what you learned in your classes. And you're right. Once an addict, always an addict. But you're avoiding the question as to whether or not you are a drug addict. Are you a drug addict? Yes, sir. Okay. Why is that so hard to admit? So, uh, I mean, it yeah. sounds like you're dancing around that question. It's a fairly simple and straightforward question. I was I was really saying yes. Yeah, and when you asked me, I was saying yes. All right, okay. So what have you done while you've been in prison to address your drug addiction? Since I've been incarcerated, so I've been, you know, not indulging in stuff that go on in prison. I've been part of church since I've been incarcerated. Uh, prayer and intercession, you know, ministry, try to stay positive and stay focused. So you've done a lot of faith-based work while you've been in prison. What have you done specifically for drug addiction? Have you taken any specific substance abuse programs? I haven't taken any at the, at the, at the moment because I they told me I didn't need it when I was in Angola. I tried to get in the classes, but they so you haven't taken any substance abuse programs to, to speak of? Substance abuse classes a while back. Right. And I didn't tell them in all these okay. classes. And you say they didn't say you needed substance abuse when you were at Angola. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> and of course, that depends on what you tell them. And that's why I'm saying even today, I had trouble pulling out of you that you were a drug addict. So maybe that's why they decided, hey, maybe you don't need it. You never talk much about your drug use. So uh, maybe that's why, okay? Let's talk a little bit about what happened in 2004. On May 11th of 2004, I want you to walk me through that day and walk me through these two murders that you committed on that day. Uh -huh. Like, what is the thing like that? Like, I'm having trouble hearing you. I'm not sure if you're not speaking loud enough or that microphone's not close enough. Yeah, uh, it was like the day I spent the day with my family. Later on, I went up to Catrice, up Catrice's house to see my daughter. And uh, we had have, we have been having a, a rocky relationship, you know what I'm saying? And, and I I went there later on the night to see my daughter. And we passed words. When I was leaving, we passed words. Let me slow you down. 
You went there to see your daughter. Were you armed? Yes, sir. Why were you armed to go see your daughter? Because one of the guys that that, that be that used to be by our house, we had passed words before. That so got into the problem. I can't hear you, sir. You expected some trouble. Uh, basically, yes, sir. What were you armed with? Nine millimeter. What? Nine millimeter. Did you tell them you were coming by? Yeah, I told her. I, 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 she knew I was coming by. So, so what happened when you got there? I got there, you know, it was packed outside. They had a lot of guys outside. And as time went on while I was out there, I was really basically waiting to see my daughter. And the crowd went to clearing out and went inside. And me and Catrice used to be talking. You know, it just, just wasn't. It was a bad relationship. The guy that was in the house at the time, he was the guy that I had an altercation with before. Where was he at when you shot the trees? And I walked out the back. I walked when I was leaving out the back. I was me and her password. And he was sitting in the living room. And I just snapped. You know, I, I regret it. Sorry for what I did. I know with a nine millimeter pistol, yes, and you shot and killed Miss Bell. Yes, sir. And then you shot and killed Mr. Landry. Now, did you go to trial or did you plead guilty? Went to trial, sir. And uh, I've read the statement that your inmate said you made to him. Now, is that true? No, I never talked to him. No inmate told me. Okay. Uh, so your children were in the room when you shot Miss Bell? I had no knowledge of uh, that they was in the dirt. I think they were asleep. Yeah. I'm going to ask you again. Were you so high on drugs you don't remember? Well, I remember exactly what happened, sir. <clears throat> what was the relationship between you and Miss Bell? Uh, the youngest daughter. Uh, no, no. The relationship. You had been, the police had been called out on a number of occasions for uh, problems between you and her. Am I right? Yes, sir. So tell me about that relationship. The relationship was rocky. I mean, it, the relationship was rocky. So you go over there with a nine millimeter weapon. Oh, sir. All the times that the police was called out, sir, it was sometimes she would just call the police on me. And the police would come and they come out. So the residents there tell me to just leave. So do you know Mr. Darrell Lewis? You know who he is? I seen him. I seen him around. I know him. I was locked up in the Central Parish with him. Okay. And you didn't tell him exactly what you did. You didn't tell him uh, that uh, how you shot her and how you killed her and how you killed Mr. Landry. You didn't tell him uh, all of those things. Well, I never told nobody nothing about my case. Did he testify at your trial? Yes, tell me what programs you've taken other than, than your faith-based programs uh, that have been helpful to you while you've been in prison? Anger for a Chain, Malachi Dads, 
inside outside dads anger management have you ever had any long term substance abuse treatment in prison I know you didn't have any outside in prison well uh, since I've been incarcerated sir I have I've been in church I try to surround myself around they wouldn't run in my feet. Understand that. And, and I appreciate that. And that's a good thing. But my question to you specifically is have you had any long term substance abuse treatment directed primarily towards your addiction? No, sir. Are you familiar with the 12 steps? I, not really, but I, I kind of can remember so much. I'm sorry? I, 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 remember I, I took it, I took AA before, but I, I don't remember the stuff. Okay. Hmm. Now, I, I was looking at your record, and that's why I asked you if you had bonded out. I, I see that there's a, uh, in 2005, there were two counts of simple battery. What was that about? You were in jail then. What was that about? When I got locked up, sir, when I, when I got locked up in the Central Parish Jail, I, I, I had to protect myself. I mean, I, I had friends of the family. They, they would try to jump me while I was in jail, and I had to fight to protect myself. Okay. In 2009, you had a charge of aggravated second-degree battery. What was that about? And where were you in 2009? I can't recall it, sir. You don't recall aggravated second degree battery in 2009? Let me see if I can give you some more details. Looks like it would have also been an Ascension Parish. 2010. You were billed with aggravated battery and you pled guilty. You remember that one? 2010, I didn't plead guilty. So the charge well, was... I'm looking at your record. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, it certainly looks to me like uh, the name Patrick C. Parker, yes, DOC sir. number 385992. Yes, sir. I show very clearly on your rap sheet that. Uh, you had a uh, Ascension Parish Sheriff's number 26714 billed as aggravated battery, pled guilty on August the 9th of 2010. You don't that's, remember that? That's, that's incorrect, sir. Okay. Well, Uh, Mr. Mayor Bell, we, we show in our record that that, that, that charge was now processed in 2014. Okay, well, I'm look, I, I, okay, well, I'm looking at his rap sheet, and it shows that uh, uh, on February, it, it was arrest date February 8, 2010. The notes show that he was billed with aggravated battery, pled guilty on 8-9-2010. Uh, okay, all right. What would be your plan if you were released? Well, I, right now I'm striving to get my GED, took the uh, high set GED test, passed all the subjects except uh, math. I just have to take math. I want to get my paralegals degree, and I want to go to college for international theology seminar. Where would you be living? My mom, Eleanor. I'm sorry. My mom, Baton Rouge. What about work? I have, a, I have my cousin Jerry. Uh, he works in doing the turnarounds in the plants. Now I'll be working with him. Gordon, what can you tell us about uh, Mr. Parker? 
Uh, yes, Mr. Merrill, very, as always, first and foremost, uh, uh, my, my sympathies for the victims and their families and uh, my appreciation for them being here today. Very for that, as always. Um, our records indicate that he did not qualify for substance abuse programming which like you alluded to earlier and rightfully so is you know that's probably from uh you know his his self admission in the intake process but obviously hearing what we've heard today you know i obviously recommend substance abuse training extensive on my living in, in balance program to begin with four part program he needs that uh, he will complete victim impact this this week. We graduate Friday, which I'm I'm happy with him for that. He needs to complete his GED. He's close. He's having a little problem with the math, but I'm confident we can get him there. Uh, he does need his education. I'd like to get that for him, but um, you know, before anything, mainly the the, the substance abuse programming he needs drastically, and uh, you know he. Since he's been with he's been with me for about a year and a half, his his conduct history has improved here. Prior to him being in Angola, it has improved, so he is showing improvement. But he has some work to do, I believe. Thank you, Warden. I appreciate your comments. Uh, now we'll hear from uh, your mother, uh, Mr. Parker, Miss uh, Ella, Eleanor Phillip. Miss Phillip. Yes. Good morning, ma'am. We can hear you. Please tell us what you'd like us to know about your son. It's that um, I have seen a, a change in him for the better. Um, he always did work with young kids to help them out. Um, he used to work a lot with my nephews and take care of them and see what them and guide them right. Um, I think he deserve another chance to come home, and I think he will do right. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your comments. Uh, we'll now hear from your cousin, Mr. Jerry Phillip. Mr. Phillip? Hello? Yes. We can hear you, Mr. Phillip. Yes, sir. Um, I'm his cousin. Um, I think you know everybody deserves a second chance. Like growing up, he he took me underneath his wing. He showed me a lot while working, worked the ethics. Um, helped my mom. My mom was a single parent. Helped my mom with me and uh, my three brothers. And I believe he, you know, he done learned his lesson. And he, when he get out, he's gonna do better. Work, work for the and help help other youngsters you know, other, other youngsters out there. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate uh, your comments. We'll now hear from uh, the opposition. Uh, let's first hear from uh, Ms. Aldernique Babin. Good morning, Ms. Babin. You'll introduce yourself and tell us what you'd like us to hear. Hi, I'm Danny. I'm the and I feel like Mr. Parker should have a second chance because it's my dad. He took my dad from me and the rest of my siblings. He never made his way true. Children with me and like is it gives me nightmares like he did to my dad. Never got to me. And then got me, never got a chance to see me graduate or like if I were to get married, he wouldn't be able to walk me out of the house or at least be able to see me grow to the other Thank you very much, ma'am. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Miss Demetria Harden. Good morning, Ms. Harden. If you would introduce yourself and tell us what you'd like us to know. My name is Demetria Harden. I feel like Mr. Patrick should not get out of jail and 
Like I hear everybody saying that everybody deserves a second chance, but what if he does get a second chance and get out and do the same thing? Then what? Then everybody can be looking stupid. So I feel like he needs to stay where he is, honestly. Because like my sister said, he never got to meet his grandkids. My son asked for his granddad, and if I want him to meet him, then I gotta bring him to the graveyard. That's not right. He can't see me walk down the aisle. If I want to get married, I got to ask my brother to walk me down the aisle. That's not right. But for him to sit up there and think that he deserves a second chance, you got to think again. Thank you very much, ma'am. Quindaya Bell? And I'm going to go for treat for I feel like they saying a second chance, but we can't get a second chance. His family up here, so we can't do nothing. I have a six-year-old daughter that asks me questions every day, and I don't, I don't know what to tell them. Like I really have nightmares when I go to sleep. I basically wake up and could see, literally see everything that happened that night. Like I just feel like. That second chance that he gonna have, we cannot have it. We can't never get that back. And I just feel like it's, it's not right. It, it wouldn't be right. Thank you very much, Ms. Bell. Appreciate your comments. Call up, Bell. Mm -hmm. Morning, Ms. Bell. I'm the mother of the priest. I don't think he deserved another chance because he didn't give them chance for me to live. When, when, I mean, they could get out to talk to him. I mean, they can go see him. But when our family really go and talk and see our, our kids and our um, dad and, and their mom and stuff, I mean, we have to talk to the site. And you can't get up to get him to back in. For him to want to have a chance to walk the streets again, it's, 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 you, he don't deserve it. He don't deserve it. Because who knows if he, if he, if he get it, that he's going to come out and do the same thing that he's done before. He's not taking, uh, uh, he, he's trying, he's trying to, is his way. You haven't you have not done half the time that they gave you. They gave you 70 years, and you the 19 years. Although 19 years, we we have suffered. We have suffered. You want the, the right to come back and work, you don't have that right. You don't need no second chance because you didn't give them a chance to live, see the kids grow up, see the grandkids, to live life, to enjoy the holidays. You said because they're not here. When they, when they come, his family will go and see him all, on all the days. I don't, I don't think that he deserves to ever walk the street again. Because the wrong that he did, he did wrong. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Parker, uh, is there anything you'd like to say before the board votes? I would like to apologize to the family. I know uh, I, I took something from them that I could never go back to them. I ain't the same person, but I will apologize to the kids, mm -hmm. to, you know, to the families and, and the friends of the family. And I apologize to the society for my action. Because I was, I look at the news every day, and I was responsible problem that plagues society. But now I want to be a part of the solution to the problem that plagues society. I apologize. I'm sorry for my wrong that I've done. There ain't no way for me to repeat or try to give back because I can't give them back what has been taken from me. The only thing that I can do to repay my debt to society is to help save a life. Not the same person. 
apologize, mom. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm deeply sorry. The nights I, I don't cry, I cry many nights. I understand that, you know, all I have to do is just keep striving for change. Thank you, Mr. Parker. We appreciate your comments. Yes. Mr. Parker, uh, uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who came today uh, and gave their testimony or simply came here to observe. Uh, took a lot of courage for uh, both sides to come forward and, and, and talk to this meeting today. Thank all of you for coming. Uh, Mr. Parker, as, as I as I listen to your interview, uh, I, I can't help but, but think that you're moving in the right direction. Uh, you, you, you've taken a uh, number of faith-based programs. You've got a, a, an idea of what you want to do uh, in the future. Uh, I, I, I think that, that you have a, a, an issue of denial still uh, to yourself about your substance abuse. Uh, you haven't gotten very much treatment while you've been in prison, and that's primarily your own fault because you weren't honest with them about your drug treatment. Uh, as I told you today, I didn't think you were being honest with me either. I had to kind of pull it out. Of you. And uh, I do think you've got a serious drug problem. And you're right. Once an addict, always an addict. And that's concerning to me. So I think you certainly need more programming uh, on the substance abuse angle, probably some long-term treatment that would benefit you. Uh, you've got significant law enforcement opposition. You've got tremendous victim opposition uh, in this case. Uh, you've only served 19 years of a 70-year sentence for two manslaughter charges. Uh, that, that was, uh, you know, it... it I think you're moving in the right direction. You're just not there yet for me. And my vote today would be to deny. Mr. Rusha. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Parker, I'm going to enumerate my reasons because I think it's important for you to understand. In my opinion, you have not served enough time. You've only served 28% of the sentence <laughs> Judge King. You need substance abuse treatment. You're a drug addict. You have expressed opposition from the judge, the sheriff's office, and the Louisiana Attorney General's office. You have adamant opposition from both of the victim's family, and you have a poor history follow supervision. For all those reasons, I deny your request. Thank you, Mr. Rocha. Mr. Freeman? Uh, I'm not going to go back over what that said, but that, that's definitely, you took two lives and, and uh, only served 19 years. That's it's not even close in my book for enough time. And you have a terrible criminal history, very violent. My vote is to deny. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Parker, uh, your, your parole has been denied today. Uh, but but you're moving in the right direction. Keep up the good work. Take some substance abuse courses. See if you can get into long-term treatment. Uh, and then reapply whenever you can. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, 